Hello, my beautiful friends. Welcome to church. Hope you had an amazing week. Wow, we are in June already. This is the first Sunday in the month of June, the sixth month of the year. Wow, that is so amazing. So today we'll be looking at living a life of service. Yes, yeah, service. Okay, but before we delve into it, let's say a short word of prayer. Eyes closed, heads bowed, everyone. Father, we thank you for yet another beautiful day. We thank you, Father Lord, for giving us the grace to, to have seen yet another wonderful day. Be there exalted, be there glorified, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, as we come to learn at your feet, we say you teach us yourself in Jesus' name. More of you and less of us in the mighty name of Jesus. At the end of today, Father, we shall have the fullest cause to glorify your holy name because you alone are Lord. Thank you for hearing us, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Okay, so before we you know, start um, the discussion for today. I would love you to join us in praise and worship. Okay, give God some quality praise and worship. Get your dancing shoes on. Shake your body like you've never shaked before. Okay, and I'll see you after this time out. Are you ready to praise God this morning? Are you ready to give Him praise today? Come on, I can't hear you. Are you ready to praise Him? Come on, let's praise Him together. We will sing of his mercy. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing. I will sing. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. Do you know it? I need to be sure. Do you know this? Can we sing it together? Are you sure we can sing it together? Let's go. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing. I will sing. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. Let me hear you say. Are you sure you know it? Do you need help? Come on, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, show sure now. Come on. Let's do it again one more time. I will sing. I will sing. Yeah. That's good. I love your voice. Yeah, I love the way you sound. And I'm sure God loves the way you sound too. Come on. Let's say it one more time again. I will sing. I will sing of the mercy. Let's do it this way. I will clap to the goodness of the Lord forever. I will clap. Come on. I will clap. I will clap to the goodness of the Lord forever. I will clap to the goodness of the Lord. Let me hear you sing. I will clap to the goodness of the Lord forever. Yes, we will clap to His goodness. Yes, we will clap. Come on.
because he has been good to me and he has been good to you we will give him praise with our dance yes we will dance i will dance read my heart read my heart Faithfulness. With my dance, with my dance, with my dance. Come on, give him Will praise. You're know. dancing to God. Hallelujah. My faithfulness. My I can see you dancing. I can see you dancing. Come on, shake Will your body. Shake your body. Come on. My faithfulness to all generations. With my dance. Jesus is my friend, oh, every day. Jesus is my friend, my friend, every day, oh. Jesus is my friend, and I sing to praise his name. Jesus is my friend, my friend, every day, oh. Jesus is my friend, my friend, every day. Jesus is my friend, my friend, every day, oh. Is he your friend? Jesus is my friend. Welcome back, everyone. Hope you had an amazing time out in that praise and worship session. Yeah, remember, in the presence of God, there's fullness of joy. Okay, so like I said earlier on, today we're looking at service. Remember, the theme for the month is living a life of service. 
So today we're looking at the desire to serve. Now I have with me two of our, our amazing friends who are Tommy Sinkushagba and Alaito Nirewa. Okay, so let's look at service. What do you understand by service? Uh, Tommy, so let's start with you. What do you understand by service? Service is doing something when for a particular period of time. Okay, how about you, Murewa? So, service is the act of doing something for some, somebody or a group of people willingly, without being forced to do it, for the development of the community or for the nation at large. Oh, nice one. You expatiated more. Okay, service means you know, doing something for someone or a group of people, okay? And largely, service is, means, you know, you're living out your purpose, okay? I remember Pastor Sam used to say one very important quote. He said, your life is too small to be the purpose of your life. You know what that means? Your life is too small to be the purpose of your life, meaning you have to live a life of service, okay? You have to live a life of service. You have to serve people. God only recognizes us when we serve people. And you know, in church, just like other you know, church settings, we have different service groups. Different service groups. We have choir, ushering, the children's department, that's the junior church. Do you know other service units in church? Tell me some more. We have protocol. Yes. We have um, Nehemiah. Nehemiah, those that clean the church. Yes, any other? We have the you know, the health units, we have the hospital ministry, we have those that visit the prisons, many of them like that. Okay, so you can serve in different units. No one is too big or small to serve. No one is too young or old to serve. Okay, we have the likes of um, Josiah, who was just eight when he became king. Hope you know that. Josiah was just eight when he became king. Eight years old. That means you are even older than Josiah. I mean, you were older than Josiah when he became king. They have the likes of Samuel. Samuel was just 11 when God called him. 11 years of age when God called him. And in, in that same vein, no one is too old to serve. Noah was 500 years old when he was called to serve, when he was called to build the ark. Okay? Moses was 80 years old when he was called to active service. Abraham was 75 when he was told to leave his father's house. Okay? But you have people who are should I say they be shy or um, may not want to serve people? They feel, no, I don't want to be in the limelight. So, Murewa, um, why do you think people are scared of serving? They just want to stay on their own. They don't want to serve. They don't want to be in the limelight. They feel, okay, let me know. I'm, not, I'm not doing that. Let me just stay. For example, you coming, you know, for uh, volunteering to be a part of this recording is a form of service. So why do you think people don't want to serve the people of your, your you know the same um, age group well i think it's because some of them don't really think they have the ability to serve and some of them think that their abilities are not enough to do the service mm, yeah the yes yes all right so Vincent, why do you think people are not willing to serve i think people are not willing to serve because they don't believe in themselves other people also bring them down when they try to serve. So they think that they don't have the capacity to serve. So they just give up. Mm, we've all spoken well. Okay. People are not willing to serve. Maybe, number one, they feel they don't have the capacity to serve. Or they just have this inferiority complex. They see people doing it. They feel, I don't think I'm up to this, up to the task. No, I'm too shy for this. No, I, the ground should just open and swallow me. You know, it happens like that. Even when I was your age, I was shy to that extent. I was quite shy. I felt, I can't do it. No, I'm not qualified to do so. But everyone is qualified one way or the other, no matter how young or old you think you are. Okay? Nobody should be afraid of service. No one should be afraid of service because God has called us to serve in one way or the other. And that reason why people don't serve is laziness. If you no, let me just stay back and, for example, your age mate might be like, ah, I'm not, I don't want to serve anybody. I'm not, I don't want to serve in any union. Let me just come to church, praise God, go back home, watch my cartoon, my, 
SpongeBob and SquarePants, watch Tom and Jerry, watch all the cartoons, watch movies, play games. I don't want to serve, you know, laziness. Another reason why people don't serve is from past experiences. For example, you volunteered in the past to serve and you were, you know, talked down by your superiors, maybe your teachers, your parents. You'll be like, look at your mates. Eh? Your mates are doing this thing. You are just there, doing nothing. Eh? Uh, Shadi is 10 years old. She's already doing exploits. You are ten, age 10. You're not doing anything. You're eating my food, eating my money. You know, so those words alone can shatter any hope for service. All right? Maybe they've, um, they've volunteered to serve before, and one, one way or the other, they were mocked by their friends, mocked by their teachers, or even their parents. You know, that alone could just extinguish any hope to serve. Okay, so um, why do you think uh, people feel jealous of those who, who serve? You know, you know, like I said, everyone has the ability to serve, even as a leader and as a follower. So why do you think people look down on other people? That, you know, when you come to serve, you're always on the limelight. People congratulate, congratulate you. Say, ah, Mura is doing well. Tomisi is doing well. And I know you have some friends at the background saying, ah, what, who do you think she is? They serve it. Ah, Maggie, that's her stay one place. So why do you think people are like that? You know? Um, I think some people are like that because maybe they have never even tried to use their talents to serve. So when they see other people succeeding in using it, they feel jealous. And even in them, they know that they, it's not because like they are jealous of the person or that they don't like the person, but it's because they have not served before. So they feel that People congratulate you because you are serving, mm -hmm. you are using your talent. They feel jealous, like, what is such a big deal? Because they have never done it before. So seeing somebody else doing it could make them feel very, very jealous or intimidated by that person. Yeah, jealousy. And once you know your place, you know, once you know your purpose in life, once you're fulfilling your purpose, you don't have to be jealous of another person. You can be a star in your place of service, your place of assignment. So you don't have to feel jealous of someone who is already maximizing his own, you know, his own talents or his, um, his or her gifts. Okay, now next week we'll delve more into the talents and gifts. All right, so let's look at, you know, Bible characters in the Bible, um, Bible characters that served. For example, Joshua, Thomas, um, Muriel, can you give us um, the story of Joshua? So Joshua was always with Moses wherever he went. And as we all know, Moses was the leader of the Israelites at that time. So even when Moses went up to the mountain to see God, to collect the Ten Commandments, wherever he went, wherever God was commanding him to do anything, Joshua was always there with him, which enabled him to learn more about being the leader of Israel. So with the time that he spent with Moses, he was able to learn a lot from him, which is why after Moses was gone after Moses had died. He was ready and prepared enough to take up the job or the leadership role of being the next leader, of being the successor of Moses, to being the leader of the Israelites. Yeah, so Joshua was willing to serve. He was more like he was understanding Moses. And when the time came for him to serve, it was a no brainer. He was chosen to lead the Israelites. Okay, so let's look at Jeremiah. Remember, God called him, but he protested that he was too young. Isn't it, Stormy say? So open your Bible to Jeremiah 1, um, 4 to 8. Open your Bibles, get your Bibles, everyone at home. Get the writing materials as well to jot things down, okay? Jeremiah 1, 4 to 8. You can go ahead and read. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the, to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a youth, for to all to whom I send you shall go, and whoever I command, 
you shall speak. Be not afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Praise the Lord. So you can see Jeremiah felt he was too young to serve. But God told him, before you were born, I formed you. Okay, so irrespective of our weaknesses, your weakness, my weakness, we can serve. Okay? Uh, Moses also protested. He said he's a stammerer. He doesn't want to serve. He's a stammerer. That means he can't speak properly. But God still used him. So God can use anyone irrespective of his or her weakness. I'm sure you'll be, you'll be at home there saying, I have one weakness or the other. I can't serve. But God is telling you today that you can serve irrespective of your weaknesses. And those weaknesses will become strengths. Remember, living a life of service means you're fulfilling, fulfilling your purpose. Okay, and everyone who loves God must serve diligently. You must serve with determination and, you know, with so much diligence. Okay, so make sure you live a life of service. Make sure you don't, um, uh, you allow service be part and parcel of you because that is why we're called on earth. That's why God called us to live a life of service and to fulfill our purpose. Okay, so... Um, I know you'll be out there saying, um, but how can I even discover my purpose? Uh, the first question is, are you even in the right standing with God? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? If you've not done so, I would love you to you know, say this short word of prayer with me. Eyes closed, heads bowed. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I know I'm a sinner. I've sinned and I've come short of your glory. Father, wipe out my sins. Welcome into your fold and make me whole. Make me part and parcel of your kingdom, O oh Lord. Forgive me my sins. I'm now one with you. I'm born again. And I'm ready to fulfill your purpose for me in life. Thank you, Lord, for accepting me. Be that exalted, be that glorified. For in Jesus' mighty name, be afraid. Amen. Wow, there's jubilation now in heaven. Remember? There is always jubilation when one soul gives his or life to Christ. You've made a wonderful decision. Yeah, and you will never regret it. So I want you to send your details to the email on the screen. Okay, we'll get in contact with you. Give you all the necessary the materials you need, you know, for your lifting, for your developments. Okay? So um, We'll continue next week. You know, this is a very interesting, a very, very interesting topic. So we'll continue next week. Okay, so for me, Tomin Sin Amurewa is a bye from us. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.